Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Episode 125, Dad. Yeah, 125. Gosh. Going up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? It, it, it? It's not until you get to a figure like that, you know, like we've done with a 50 and the 75 and the 100, 125, that it suddenly dawns on you <laughs> how many you've done. Blimey. We're pros now, you see. <laughs> Podcast well, pros. Well, certainly the way you're doing this is going to be fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if this, if you pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. If I pull it off, hopefully I will. Anyway, so if you're on YouTube, hopefully you're able to watch uh, a, a video podcast. We're not in the same studio, unfortunately, um, but we're in our two separate uh, places and uh, hopefully... Uh, this is going to come out well as a video, as well as the audio version, as we normally do. So, uh, how are you today, Dad? Oh, I'm very well, yeah. I've been working, uh, well, not all day. I, we, we popped out this morning briefly, but I've been working for the last two, three hours. So, I was glad of a break, really, and we said, <laughs> oh, let's do a podcast. Almost forgot this week. <laughs> you, you did, didn't you? Well, I thought I'd better remind you, as, it was, as time was creeping on. It was funny, it's funny I got your text... Uh, a three minutes before I thought oh, I should text dad actually we've got to do a podcast <laughs> and then I went and looked at my phone and he had texted me so uh, uh, just about squeeze this one in telepathy That's yeah I knew you see I knew I knew <laughs> anyway so you've been busy then you're you've been working on a, a new uh, landscape picture yeah well you're going to put the new um, uh, Welford is it Welford on Avon yep, yep. Uh, the new landscape picture that's, that's going right. up that's right well that's going up this week and that is a corker. I would say probably that's the best picture I've ever done in terms of what I would have loved to have done when I first started. You know, when I first started, I, I, I kind of had a, I looked at lots and lots of pictures, mainly John Constable was, as you know, one of my great heroes. And I looked at his pictures, and thought, oh, wouldn't it be lovely one day to produce something like that? And I thought, no way am I ever going to do it. But, you know, I'll I'll do the best I can. Well, that Welford on Avon is getting pretty close to it. Not John Constable, don't get me wrong, but the kind of picture that I would have loved to have produced. Isn't that mad as well, like, after all the years of you doing this, to be well, getting just now closer to doing it? Because you've done well, so many landscapes. What do you think is the difference between you doing a landscape now and you done a landscape... 20 years ago or 10 years ago is it just experience uh yeah you can see it too I, i'm i'm looking at it at the moment on the screen um because we're going to be talking about it later and when i look at it now i'm amazed i mean it was a while ago i did this a little while ago i did this so i've kind of almost um put it to the back of my mind and there's a few projects i've done since then so looking back on it now on the screen, I think, my goodness me, it's it's almost hard to believe that I did that. I mean, I I copied a lot of it. I copied and um, a lot of it I've made up. So it's been a fifty-fifty thing. But copied some of the ideas because it is uh, you know Welford on Avon, so it's a it is a place. Although it doesn't look like that, a shame that it doesn't. Um, but I've sort of taken it back to the turn of the century, perhaps just a bit before that, the last century, I mean, you know, so 1890-ish, which is my favourite time of all. I love the dress of the time. I love the, uh, I love everything about that. Mm. Almost just before the motor car came in and ruined it. <laughs> but what, what do you think is the difference between the landscapes that you did back then you know 10 years ago and the landscapes that you're doing now are you we spoke a little bit about this are you getting braver with yes. doing it is that Absolutely. is is it yeah. is it a combination of confidence and experience and sort of well you're doing you've you're you haven't got the pressure as much pressure as you had 10 20 years ago is that why your pictures are getting closer to john constable kind of style uh probably what a lot of it is, though, when you're doing artwork and you really get into artwork and you start understanding what's needed, you realise that just copying something straight from one to another isn't good enough. You've got to kind of pass it through your own computer system, if you know what I mean, your physical computer system. I've never used that word term before, but it actually is a good term 
technology for what I'm trying to say. You pass it through your own computer system. That changes things, turns it into your own particular style. It, it gives you um, a freedom that you probably wouldn't have if you hadn't done it that way. You remember years ago, um, and I mentioned it on the art story, when I did some p paintings of animals particularly, and I one I did one particular one, and I had a panic attack because I thought, how did I do that? I couldn't remember doing it. And this is the same sort of thing, You, but now I do know why it happens, and I, I, I'm expecting it to happen. But when I can produce pictures like this, it really knock, knocks it home. You know, I realize that there is, there's more to come, Steve. I'm doing another one at the moment, is, as I've just said. Is the reason, is the same idea. Is the reason why you had a panic attack is because you felt like you sort of not weren't in control? Yeah, exactly right. That's what panic attacks are. You're, you're not in control of what you've done. Uh, I mean, I thought when I did it and saw the end result, I couldn't believe, one, that I'd done it. And two, how on earth, if I can't remember how I did it, how am I going to do it again? You see what I mean? It's, it's, you can understand that. Mm. And, but now I know the process and familiar with the process. I'm very confident in what I do. I love what I do. I'm passionate about it. And the picture that I finished, when I finished it, when it came out and people, when they see it, as they will do very, very soon now, I think they'll understand what I'm trying to get at. I another thing that I did with this, I know you didn't. Do you want to talk about it now? Or do you well, want to talk I was, about it later? I, I'm interested with the process that you're describing. Well, this is part of this process. Then the process I'm talking about. Normally, you see me with my nice blue skies, don't you? You know, my usual nice blue skies. You know, put a bit of white cloud on and put a bit of blue, give it a rub, and there it is. Well, with this one, it's completely different. We've got a bit of blue in it. We've got a bit of gray. We've got a bit of ochre. But mainly, we've got a lot of ochre. And I wanted to bring this into the realms of the Quintons, you know, the, the, the constables, the people who um, years and years ago were able to conjure up, really, uh, a scene and enhance it from what they're looking at. I mean, you're looking at a scene, they probably, what well, Constable didn't take photographs, but Quinton probably did. He was around. And what he would have done, he's taken the photographs, but really not pay too much attention to them. He took the photographs, used the photographs, as I do here, and I used about four or five with this particular picture. But I used the photographs purely as reference. Then I changed them. I changed it to fit how I felt the end product should be so the photograph is is more or less a blueprint for, for... Mm, the photograph is is your focus point your reference it's no good i can't i never have been able to conjure up a picture certainly on the quality of this just out of my imagination i couldn't mm. do that mm. i'm not sure um even quinton could do that he would have looked at his he would have um, been on site or taken his camera and photographed the scenes that he did, then he would have taken back to the studio. Those would have been the reference points that he would have used. From that, he would say, right, now, I can see I've got to do this. I've got to see I've got to do this. This is a shape of this building. This is a shape of this building uh, in relation to the next one. Now I want to do my own thing. Mm. And that's what he did. And this is what I've done with this. I've done my own thing. You, when you look at this, you'll see a lot of Quinton, a lot of Constable, a lot influence I'm talking about mm. uh, in it and but it's still my picture mm. going back to you said about the process and about putting it through your computer system for those that are listening that are either starting out or haven't been doing it very long um, is kind of do you think part of the goal as an artist is to uh, somewhere to get to so as sort mm. of a, a goal to aim for is to once you've copied and you've you've learned techniques and things like that, is the goal to eventually do what you just said and take your reference picture, f run it through your own filter, um, mm. and then what comes out is is something that is has got your influence and your stamp on it. Absolutely, absolutely. That 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 is the the ultimate goal. I mean, 
I would have, if you'd have asked me years ago, when I first started out on this, when I was looking at the constable's work in the National Gallery, because that's where I uh, got my greatest inspiration from. And if you'd have said to me, you know, one day, Colin, but quite a few years from now, if you stick at what you're doing, you can produce something similar to this. Would you be prepared for all the um, hours that you're going to have to put in to practice it um, to achieve those ends? My answer would have been absolutely. And if mm. I go back now, I've, I don't regret one minute of time that I've spent in practicing. I mean, it helped being a teacher as well, because by teaching people, they teach you. Mm. So I've, I've learned a lot from other people. And so that, that does help. Mm. That's really interesting. I think it is. And uh, w the wonderful thing about art is, you know, there's another one in you. Hmm. which, uh, as, you, as I said, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying what I'm doing at the moment. I love the animals. I love doing the animals. I love doing the flowers. I love doing the portraits. I love them all. I love everything about the art. But, and I love the cartoons. I thoroughly enjoyed those. It's all part and parcel of the uh, creative side of uh, an artist. But then to do what I'm doing now uh, it culminates into something rather special in the end in my opinion do you think and and this is a sort of a dub, double edged question if that's such a thing do you think that uh, your mood not you specifically but people's mood affects depend uh, affects the artwork that they do so it depends on their mood and the second part to this two part question then the second part is have you ever done a a picture where your mood has influenced what comes out on the paper? Uh, can I put the second one first? The answer would be no. I, I've never failed anything that I've set out to do, despite all my mood. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of the pictures when I first started out were done under very, very difficult circumstances. Mm. But the, one of the good things about art is, uh, or, and any of the other creative uh, pursuits is that you can actually lose yourself in your picture you do have to come back to earth i'm afraid uh you know so if you have a going through a particularly bad time and you take up creative art and you you, you lose yourself in it for a while you can actually leave that particular environment i do know that people will say yeah it's okay to say that but you've got to come back to it of course you have but at least that respite is very therapeutic. Hmm. I suppose it, it it was it I was just thinking that if you're in a particularly, you know, like you said um you had difficult circumstances towards the beginning and uh I was just interested if if that translated into the the type of pictures that you would pick to do. Do you know what I mean? Like some people do some really deep pictures that they mean to look deep you know like they do very atmospheric or very you know like a long narrow thing and that's what they it could possibly be a reflection on how they're feeling at the time and things like that mm. but I suppose the other angle you're coming from is that it's it's not influenced into the picture because where the the mindset that you go into when you're doing the picture none of that affects what you're doing uh, well it, it didn't for me Steve yeah I can't really speak for everybody. It might not work that way for other people. Mm. Uh, I, it just f for me. And I've gone through, I mean, I've had a really, I've had a great life, as you know. And although there's been one or two setbacks, basically it's been a great life. And so perhaps I'm one of the lucky ones, you mm. could argue, that I'm lucky that I found, a, I found something that I really love to do early on. Um, but other people might not be so lucky, so they may... I can't speak for them. Mm. They might find that you know, if they've got a particular, a very serious illness, for instance, then that might play on their mind so much that it would affect the artwork that they do. Yeah. Or, I can't really say. Yeah. I would, but I certainly feel that if you have got, or you are in those positions and you take up art or, or one of the other p uh, creative pursuits, it will help you. Without doubt, it will help you mm. get over some of the problems. One of the problems we know that if you if you don't allow yourself 
the break from the reality that you've created for yourself, if you don't allow yourself that break, that's when depression and illness can come in big time. Mm. So you do need that, that, uh, that break away. And the art or creative art, doesn't matter what you do, even cards, you know, people make cards and, and do craft. That's all the same. It, it's still a, a pursuit that they can lose themselves in just temporarily. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. That uh, was a nice little discussion. I want to move on to the people's uh, questions, emails this week. All right. Um, so the first one comes from Colin. Well, well, well. And it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> they say, uh, hi, Stephen, Colin. I know on previous podcasts, the subjects of different pastel papers has been mentioned. Recently, I discovered a French make of pastel paper called uh, Miton Touche pronounced yeah it's it's spelt touch but it's pronounced miton touche uh, or so uh, colin was told i found it to be very good with the pastel pencils and with soft pastels it is good for blending and it is able to take a certain amount of water if you wanted to use water with the pastel or watercolor paints i was able to re-establish pastel pencils over soft pastels Miton Touche does not wear down the pencils as quickly as other makes of pastel card. It was worth a try, Colin. I thought that right. was a, I thought it was a good email because um, all of that information is quite valuable to other people listening. So, uh, absolutely, uh, I, I personally wouldn't do it now because I've I've got my own established style, and I I, I wouldn't particularly go down that road. But I do recommend other people do that. Mm. Try it. Try it and see. Our paper, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is the best for me and it produces the best results. But that doesn't mean to say there isn't another paper that would do the same thing. Uh, so it's worth giving it a go. Try it and see. Yeah. On the subject of paper, it's worth us talking about um, the changes that we're making here with the paper. Uh, because we've we've been in touch with our suppliers. We've mentioned it on a few podcasts ago, didn't we? That we were, mm, mm. had some meetings with suppliers and talking about paper. Well, the the uh, the Engray Fabriano paper. Uh, we've been lucky enough to get a, a, a deal whereby we can have a custom pad uh, of of Engray paper made. So rather than people buying it in singular sheets, uh, very soon we're going to be stocking the. Uh, we're stocking our own pads of on grey paper and in these pads uh, there's 25 sheets opposed to 10 sheets for 4.95 uh, and these pads uh, are going to have 25 sheets so um, you're going to get a lot more for your money but also the exciting thing is uh, for the first time we're going to be able to offer the A4 uh, on grey paper in different um, styles of portrait and landscape so we've always talked about which side should you have the tooth running up, you know, vertical or horizontal. Well, if you want to buy a landscape pad of on grey paper, you'll have the tooth running horizontally exactly the way you want it. And if you want to buy a portrait pad, then you'll have it going vertically, which is exactly how you want it. So we're really excited to finally be able to uh, do that with our supplier. The only thing that I would add to that is if uh, somebody would like some of one and some of the other in one pad, you can't have that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> we, that's, that would that's, be impossible for the that suppliers would be impossible to, do. <laughs> to do. Yeah, they can't do that. So it's either one or the other, but uh, it's still a, a great idea. And we, we've got our, what Steve's work hard on <clears throat> putting the front cover together. So it's got our name on the front and it's got very clearly portrait and landscape. Yeah. So you can't make a mistake. Yeah. That's but it. I think that's very, very good. And uh, it's it's been, on the cards for a while now, but it's taken us this long to get to it. But look forward to it, folks. Yeah, it's going to be excellent. I can't uh, give too much more away at the moment because we're, we're just waiting to get the samples through and to confirm that we, uh, we'd we like to, to place the order. But as soon as we get them, we're going to whack them up on the store and I'm sure people are going to start snapping them up. Um, we can still, well, for the moment, we're still going to be stocking the A4 in singular sheets. Yes, indeed. Um, until our stocks deplete uh, with what we've got. Um, and it's worth giving uh, advance notice for those that prefer the bigger uh, B4 size uh, that we're not going to continue stocking that past the existing stock we've got. So, That's um, right. 
Well, that has that that was a good idea at the time, wasn't it, Steve? But it's not proved as popular as we thought it would be. Uh, so it's um, it's going have to go by the wayside. But I'm sure people will find that the A4 is is it adequate, especially if they have the choice of. Uh, you know, landscape and portrait. Well, that's it. People were buying the B4 because they wanted the, the teeth running the other way. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, so they, they will be able to get that without um, without having to buy the bigger well, piece. Well, I, I used to do the same thing. I, in fact, the, the, the latest one I did, I had to cut down the B, a B4 to fit it. And yeah. in a way, you're wasting paper, aren't you? Yeah. By doing that. I mean, I do use the odd scraps for, for uh, practicing on, but you still lose some paper. Yeah. So uh, we, yeah, that's um, that's really exciting, and uh, we can't wait to to, to get them through uh, those pads of paper. So look out for those on the store. The next one comes from uh, Bonnie. Now Bonnie sent this through yesterday. She says, "Hi, just wondering if you have the uh, woman in the pink dress." with the black mask available as a project it does look uh challenging but i would like to try it at some point do you have the printouts for this project thank you bonnie and i had to say back to bonnie that unfortunately it wasn't a project uh the re i said the reason why is because it's uh you well you didn't plan on it being a project did you but way back then you know it was done uh initially for um my wife eileen your mum and it hangs in the bedroom so that's what it was for. And it's a big uh, picture. It was also done... Yes, it is a big picture, yes. It was also done um, because some... What, there's a story behind it. I don't think you know the story. What happened was someone bought that picture or the original picture in, which was a print, in fact, for framing because they loved it so much. It was very old and very fragile. I think it must have been... I'm guessing... 50 years old, the print. It was a very, very old, wow. fragile print. And I said to them, I was raving about it. I said, this is beautiful. Would you mind if I copied it? Because it's almost certainly, I would think, out of copyright. So she, they said, no, no, not at all. I'm quite happy for you to do. So I actually had it photographed and uh, kept it for a while, framed the picture, and they were really pleased with it. And, and then I was thinking, well, I really would love to do that picture. This is one of these things you, you, you look at and you think, I really want to do that. Uh, and I did, and it worked out really well, and I framed it, and it's been hanging up in our bedroom now for 20 years, at least wow. 25, probably you've, 25 you've years. You've kept that picture alive. I know, and it, it, it's, it's stunning. Uh, in answer to Bonnie's question, Steve, Really, no reason why I shouldn't do that on a smaller there scale. There's no reason. Oh, yeah. Well, it would be done a four size. Yeah. Um, what I uh, one of the other reasons why it was never done as a project was I felt it was too hard, mm. too difficult because it, yeah. it used a lot of a lot of um, the polychromos and the soft pastel too. Because there's parts of that picture you haven't seen. Uh, well, you have, but they people haven't because I cut it down. I cut the picture down to A4. So some of the the edges and the bottom of the picture isn't shown on that uh, image that you see. Right. Um, and I probably would carry on if I did it again. It would be that same size without those embellishments. Um, because really with a portrait, you want to see as much of the figure as you can. And if I was to do it smaller than uh, the picture that I've got already, the face would be, you know, two thirds the size and the hand would be two thirds the size. So you'd be losing out somewhat on the features, which are the main part of the picture. Yeah. So if I did it, so if I did it again, and there's a very good chance I will do, my comment was that I didn't think people would be able to do it. I thought it was too hard. Well, look at the children. I, I would have thought that about the children years ago, but yeah. it's been done a few times and done very successfully. So I've got every faith in our uh, members that they would actually be able to do that. Well, Bonnie will be pleased. Well, t yes, tell her. Uh, it won't be for a little while. I've got so much on, but... Yeah. Um, 
tell her to hang around, you know. Um, we'll, if we do decide to do it, I'll uh, let you know. And uh, at least you can say it's now uh, in the pipeline. Mm. Good. Okay. Uh, talking again, going back to this uh, this new picture, Welford on Avon. What, um, what, why do you think, because this one is an advanced project, um, mm. not that that means much nowadays when people no. are doing <laughs> it. doesn't really matter. All. People will still try it and that's great. So uh, it's not a problem. Um, but why do you think it is, what makes it an advanced picture? Uh, well, first of all, I didn't hold back on anything. I don't now. If I'm doing a picture, I do it. In the, the old days, I used to hold back. If I was doing a project, I would think, oh, no, that's too hard. I'll, make, I'll simplify it. Uh, well, I, didn't, I don't do that anymore. I do it properly. And what makes it great is, first of all, the subject material, the thatch cottages. It's a typical English scene, isn't it? Mm. Rural scene. And also, Welford on Avon, that scene there, those cottages right in the foreground there, uh, and the church on the left are still there. And because I've seen a modern picture of that, uh, they don't look like that, not quite the same. They've been modernized a little bit. Yeah. Um, but they're still very pretty. And so it's still a place that you could actually go and visit. Uh, the stone wall's gone, it's just a fence there now. And the people are no longer with us. <laughs> 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 yeah, that makes sense. They, they, they're long gone. Actually, they never existed because they are. Uh, I took all of those people were taken from uh, other reference points, so they were all made up anyway. Uh, but the, so that's what made that I think uh, more real. And the other thing is that what I like particularly is the horse and cart. I think that is stunning. I I did then, and I still do now. There's a little story attached to it, and people, when they see it, they can see the story. The horse and carts coming along the road, uh, because of those cars in those days, we're talking, we're going back way, way, way back when the horse and cart was the only means of transport. Anyway, the mum and the two children are eagerly, now they can either be two, two things, stories here, and I'll let people make their own story up. They can either be waiting for the horse and cart to take them on holiday somewhere or this could be a holiday home that they're waiting outside and they could be going home. Oh, I see, yeah. It's up to them. I'll leave people to make their own mind. I kind of feel that they're actually going on holiday. That's what I think. Although why you want to leave a place like that, I don't know. Not when it's painted like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, interesting enough, the chickens on the right-hand side, they were additions. They weren't there at all. They flew in later. <laughs> Why did you want to put chickens in there? What made you... One, well, I've seen it in other pic paintings. As I said, when you, when you have a painting and you construct a painting, you, you've got to have ingredients in it. And I wanted uh, all the ingredients. I wanted the animals. Uh, well, I got a horse anyway. But I wanted, um, and I could have put a dog in or a, a cat or whatever, um, but I thought, no, I know, a few chickens would be nice. So they, they are just running wild there. <laughs> and I don't know who they belong to. <laughs> um, they're great. going to be short of grub if, uh, if uh, these people were going on holiday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to fend for themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's kind of combining the, the farm yes. animals recently with the uh, rooster and that's, uh, well, that's what and I the landscape <laughs> with the horse and cart at the ploughing field. Uh, so you're kind of, you're merging pictures into one. I am, yes. That's but great. those, but the, um, the horse and cart and the people were from uh, a completely different picture. One of Quinton's, in fact. You know, one of Quinton's paintings. Mm. Uh, I pinched the people. I changed the colours and so on. But I, um, th they were more or less taken from that. Um, but not that uh, Welford and Avon. The actual picture itself was different. And also the trees and the cottage on the right. All of these things were added. 
So and it's that, been and that's why option. we can't show the reference picture when people ask. Oh, <laughs> well, no, that's impossible. It's because no. there's about 20 involved in this picture. <laughs> no, All you right. can't do that. No, it would be impossible to do that in a situation like this when I'm making it up. The one I'm doing at the moment, though, um, I did, I did, it was an old black and white um, picture. And I do show that a couple of times during the, um, the, the making of the picture. Oh, right. I bring it back in and say, but you will very, very soon see how much change I've made to it. Great. Uh, when you eventually get to see it. So I love doing that. I think it, it stamps it as my picture, you know, mm. my creation. Mm. Good. So, so this is what happened here. But I think uh, coming back to Welford, I think the thatch is gorgeous. The thatches are gorgeous. But you've only got the thatch on the, 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 the two cottages. On the building on the right, uh, that's a tiled roof. That's not a thatch. So, so a lot, I wanted a lot to... of different elements in this picture. Then. Oh, lots and lots and lots. And you've got the distant trees, which I love too. You know, it pushes the... It gives you a dimension by having those trees in in on the right hand side behind the building uh, being very faint. It gives you that sense of distance, mm. which well, that, again, that that's a skill that people would have picked up doing plowing the field. So absolutely. The, the, so yes. it's a nice follow on from what people may have already tried. Oh, I'm I'm sure that people are going to try this. I, I do recommend they do. Uh, because it's a lovely picture to do, and you've got a good line drawing there. Uh, the line drawing, incidentally, I'm sure people will realise that, is all made after I finish the picture, because I never know what... If I gave you the original line drawing, it wouldn't look anything like that. So the line drawing is made at the end, when I finish it, when mm. I've got it all together. So in a way, uh, it's better, because you've got... Uh, and and one of the things you never see on my picture, you don't see drain pipes, and, and uh, <laughs> I get rid of all those. <laughs> yeah, the water water just has to run off the roof, and that's the way it is. This is the eighteen nineties. <laughs> well, they had drain pipes then, but yeah. I won't put them in. I refuse. That's one of the things I refuse. And and I used to say uh, when I did more modern pictures, I'd never put television aerials in. I'd never ever have ever have I put a television aerial that's in. True. I mean, they don't have them so much now with the, the digital, but um, and the, the, the sky and so on. And uh, but and one day they will be obsolete, won't they? Yeah. So, but uh, I would never put them in. All right. Well, that's uh, it's, hopefully that's uh, given people a bit of an insight of the creative process. I've been interested in how you've uh, come up with that picture and, and what goes through your mind when you're doing it. So uh, I think that's uh, going to be quite interesting. As always, uh, get uh, your questions coming in. Keep them coming in. Go to colinbradleyart.co.uk and uh, click the contact page at the top and keep all your questions coming in and we'll mention them on the podcast. Uh, if you've got a few minutes, it would be great if you could leave us a positive review on iTunes and uh, keep us going up those ranks so other people can discover us and look out for the project coming up in the next couple of days, uh, Welford on Avon, circa 186090, I think. I, don't, I can't remember what I called it, but it's <laughs> Whatever. Late, late. Late nineteenth century. That's right. <laughs> and uh and that's it for this week. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Steve Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Enjoy, Enjoy your week. week.